first episode back with Mushoku Tensei, and so far, we are safe from the controversies. Chibi Reviews is already farming the drama on Twitter by saying, people who watch Mushoku Tensei are trash, and where he's basically responding to that. Chibi didn't say that, he's saying the outrage, right? If you watch Mushoku Tensei, you're a bad person. I mean, there are some elements that is indeed bad, but you should be able to separate fiction from reality. If you play COD and you kill people in game, does that mean you enjoy killing people outside of the game? Not really, right? Now, what was happening last episode? It was basically getting a new house so that we can have something to show Sylphie. There were some dolls in there and Zanaba was like, Shishu, can I have this doll so I can make it a sex doll? Because he got naked, right? He gets like naked when he's like dancing with the dolls and shit and like touching it all over the place, right? He did that one time. So I think that's where the direction we're going to go there with. But it is interesting to see that there's this master craftsman in the past who owned this mansion, who created this doll with mana and was able to, you know, make a sentience, which means that our figurines should also be able to move around with mana. Now, don't know what's going to happen in this episode. Surely just more buttering us up, just making us feel like everything is fine, calm before the turning point happens. Let's begin today's reaction. Okay. It's like a whole housewarming party, yeah? Who are we inviting over? Maybe this is how Rijard and everyone comes back? Yeah? <laughs> what the fuck was that hype and selfie? She's so serious right now. <laughs> it's just a housewarming party, but it's like an important mission. Look at that enthusiasm and the hype. Ryukai. Ooh, Erina Rize. Body Gotti! Sure. And there are two attendants, the NPCs. Oh yeah, Nana Hoshiku. That would be sad. <laughs> boss, boss. They just worship us because we're stronger. Huh? What's going on? Now, Erina Rize did notice Sylphie's some kind of accessory in Season 2 Part 1. And I think that accessory was like some kind of connection with the elves because they're... No, no, Sylphie's not... Wait, 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 wait. Sylphie... Sylphie isn't... <laughs> Sylphie's an elf, right? Pointy ears. She's green hair before. I thought that she could have been spared, but no, she's not spared because she doesn't have that thing in the middle head. Long ears. Eddie and Nadeze also ears. Eddie and Nadeze recognized some kind of um, accessory. And wasn't the accessory something to do with like, a, a, like an important thing of the elf culture? I forget beyond that though. Hmm. Okay, here we go. Oh, so lewd. Clinging onto my sh you know, my arm. Mm. New drip? Rudy new drip? Bald. Rudy's new drip time. Mm. Mm, I don't like that one. Yo. Someone's gotta fucking, someone's gotta make a meme of Rudy's new drip. Instead of this, put a Supreme jacket on. You know those memes of like putting anime characters in like Supreme clothing? Like, you know, Albert from fucking Class in the Elite just going like this with the Supreme drip dude. You gotta put Rudy in that dude. <laughs> Alright. Ew. It's made of fucking rat pelt? It's a lucky rat though from the Demon Continent. Did we ever come across Lucky Rats in the Demon Continent in Season 1? Kazura's design. Poison Acid Resistance, OP. Okay, I don't know what this says. Any news I'm sure will tell us, but basically, this is how much it is, and this is worth a lot of money. He rich as fuck. Bakana! Rudeus! Luke-sama? Uh, Ariel's attendant, Luke Greyrat. The guy that apparently we're going to have a sword duel with in the opening or the trailer, right? The trailer showed us like a duel between Luke and Rudy, but Rudy was using a sword. Lord Luke has been the most generous in his patronage. Okay, bro has been balling out here. Greyrat discount! Get it! Pig. <laughs> Why are you so excited at the pig? <laughs> Never seen Rudy so fucking excited in my life. Pig! More symbolisms. 
More symbolisms, two stars in the sky, man. Oh, they're dating guys. <laughs> Rudy's actually so muscular. We saw him working out last season. Maybe she can make a homemade meals that reminiscence of her mother. Oh, so this is Rudy's like full era without the, the gray rat ponytail. It looks better like this sometimes. I, she, she, she should just rock his hair like this, bro. I think Sophie deserves better. No, I'm kidding. I don't know. Mm. This is too happy. <laughs> Kiss. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What's going on? The blood flow. Uh-oh. Oh, we fucking. He just fucking tossed her. <laughs> oh, we fucking. Please dig in. Can I hear the booty cheeks getting clapped? No, we skipped that. We skipped that. Well, we skipped it, but the icicles are suggesting something else. I feel like these icicle water dripping is alluding to something else. So we can leave that for the imagination. Vice principal isn't showing up? Fine. What is body Gotti doing right now? What, 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 what is body doing right now, right? He's a demon king, but he signed up for this school for some fucking reason because he was so interested in Rudy. Is he just chilling? Is he just drinking and just having fun? What is bro up to? Body Gotti is very interesting to me. Does he have his own dorm? What, uh, where is he staying? I don't fucking know. Nanahoshi showed up though. Reminiscing that back home. Okay, the secret's out. This is some freedom shit. He's just so fucking old. The time, it's just like whatever to him. So he's gonna show up late in a month and he's gonna bring freedom. Freedom also. He's just like, huh? Okay. <laughs> Eddie Nariz is pretty old too, right? Toast. Kampai. Even Julie's here. Come on, speech time. Bodyguardy! <laughs> Just fucking interrupts the entire fucking speech. Giga Chad, cue my big entrance. I was waiting for that, Rudy. Is. Hello, my demon king. What's up? Okay, in the demons culture, right? The royals, the important people, the hero always arrives. All right. Thank you. Thank you, bodyguardy. Thank you. Be grateful that I showed up late and crashed your wedding invitation, you know, fucking housekeeping, house gathering thing, your speech. You should be thankful. Now applaud. <laughs> applaud for a king body gaudy. <clears throat> no. Awkward silence. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> He's just moderating it now. Kanpai! Thank, thank you, buddy, got it. Thank you. I feel like she only showed up for the food. I feel like she only showed up for the food. She does not give a fuck about the way. <laughs> Look how happy she is. She stole her food! We got more food. Don't worry about it. We got more food. Nana when she eats potato chips, but the mask has to be lifted just a little bit. And Cliff's like, what the fuck? Hold up. Hold up. What's underneath that? Because Zanama body got a drinking competition with Julie. <laughs> Julie can drink hard because she's a dwarf, right? Yeah. Who could out drink body got it? Probably Julie. Child slavery under his drinking. Let's fucking go. Is that a luxury? I guess it is a luxury back in the day. If it didn't have a bath, where would you bath? You would just not bath? You would just be stinky? You would go to the fucking river nearby and clean yourself? 
How the fuck does showers and baths work here? One year maternity leave? <laughs> Newlywed leave. Okay. Nah, Luke, we got a discount because of you, bro. We're chill. But if they're so happy right now, and Luke does not feel any animosity towards us, like and he did in part one for a bit, why the fuck are we fighting in the trailer with swords? What's going on there? Maybe it's just like a spar. Maybe they're... Because it was out of context. There's probably no drama. Maybe it's just a spar? <laughs> See, guys? Child slavery and underage drinking is not so bad. Look how cute you <laughs> I can't believe what I'm fucking saying right now. <laughs> I can't believe what I'm saying right now. But <laughs> Dub Julie. Dub Julie. She's great. She got the proper etiquette. Maybe Zanova taught her. Madame, how could I have mistaken my master's wife for a man? <laughs> Everyone did. Everyone got baited. I mean, that was the fucking disguise. Wait. Wait. The disguise only worked because of what Luke said about the gray rats in the end of part one. And what did Luke say? The common trait of a gray rat is they like voluptuous women. Big ass, big titties. But elves are naturally not like that. And because Sophie is not like that, she was able to pass as a tomboy. So now Zanoba saying, how could I have mistaken you for a man? is now digging more into Sylphie's lack of assets, which is a direct insult to his master's wife. No, I'm cooking way too much. Everyone got it wrong. Am I gay? I'm, I'm, I, why is this? Why, 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 why is my dick getting hard for a man right now? Am I, am I gay? That was, that was the entire part one. He's like, oh shit, it's rising right now. Hold up. What the fuck is going on? Mind your manners, she says. Tie the knot. Tie the knot. Because, like, a, a knot is... Um, you, you, you use a rope and you can tie a knot. But in the context of furries, a, a, a knot is... <laughs> you know? It's a hashtag, it's in its own category. And if she's saying with tie the knot in this context, are they? <laughs> okay, okay. Person that could smell that shit, all right. Lenny, a person that could smell it. Might makes right. Just basically looking for the strongest seed to make the strongest offspring. Just like in Delta and Emerson Shadow. You know, fuck my brother. He's too fucking weak. We can just make another strong one. <laughs> this is the best. Body Gotti and Julie scenes are actually so fucking wholesome. Uh, thanks. <laughs> Just... <laughs> Sophie did get ignored the entire episode when Rudy and Nanahoshi was talking, right? And was, we just pretty much ghosted her. There must be something irking her about that. Isekai. Tensei, Isekai. Okay. That's it. Good enough answer. Because he's from Millis, he's, he can grant the blessings and stuff. Didn't the Anonymous video say, like, um, because uh, uh, Cliff is from Millis, he's able to do some kind of ceremonial shit? Right? 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 Wh which god? Just Millis god? This is a curse! He just cursed us with turning point three! No! Fuck the god usually in Isekai. The church is usually always bad. Cliff prayer, the blessing of the god of Millis is, this is the reason we're gonna get turning point three! But I'm sussy of churches in Isekai. Okay, blessing. Yeah. What? I have no intention to be giving Paul's daughter because she already fucked Paul too before, bro. I mean, Body Gotti also fucked Arina Rize in your two. Elves, two elves. What's their connection? I thought she's crying because 
Rudy and Sophie are happily married and because Arena Lisa has a curse? But she's crying? What is the connection between these two elves? Or is Sophie your long lost something? Are you her sister? What is this shit? The accessory thing that Anina and Lisa saw when talking to, you know, Sophie in season one, season two, part one. So that was basically a family heirloom, meaning they're the same family grandma Irina Rize. Grandma, you're looking real nice though. This, this is a grandma? This is a grandma? Man, the elves got a fucking good. Luke is a gilf slayer. Sorry. Gilf Slayer is the same thing as saying ATM machine or SMH my head. Luke? Actually, no, that's the, no, no, it does make sense. Luke is a Gilf Slayer. That does make sense. Gilf Slayer. Not a Milf Slayer. Gilf Slayer. <laughs> Plot twist? Wait, 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 wait. How does this work? Hold on, hold on, hold on. If Cliff and Arena Lisa gets together and eventually gets married, then they. Then, then, and then Cliff becomes Sophie's. Grand step grandfather. Therefore, Rudy becomes grandson in law. What? 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 Wait, 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 wait. How? What the? Wait, 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 what the fuck is going on? <laughs> no, there's, it's just a curse. There's nothing wrong with whores. No, come on. My dad told me that my grandma went adventuring with Paul, and Irina Rize did go adventuring with Paul. Uh-oh. <laughs> Sophie's dad got chased out of the great forest because grandma was a fucking slut. Be gone, thought! You are banished from the great forest! Oh no! This is crazy. This is fucking crazy. Yeah! The pendant! Do they have similar faces? Cliff Senpai. Or should I say Cliff Grandfather? No! Cliff is not grandfather yet. Cliff is our grandmom's boyfriend. Yes! That's what Cl not that it makes it any better, but Cliff is our grandmother's boyfriend. What a fucking revelation. No more boy. And his daughter Laws is dad and the daughter Sophie. Yes. It's, it's chill, don't worry about it. Oh, oh, Erina Rize thought that the marriage would just be done because they're like, oh no, I'm a whore, you'd be related to a whore. No, chill, 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 chill. We're good, we're good, we're good. Yeah, you should be more worried about that. We're becoming family <laughs> in lives. All right, dub Rudy. Nice diffuse the situation. But goddamn, what a revelation. All right, I've had my all-you-can-eat buffet. I'm out. Peace, bye. Bye-bye. Stinky. Stinky Nanahoshi wants to use her bath. What's wrong, Sanova? Body knows. Yo, body's probably the only one that could tap, you know, uh, Zanova like this and be fine with it, right? Sorry, Z yeah, Zanova's be able to take these taps because if Rudy was here, they could he get fucking stent. We still don't know why Sophie's hair changed, but we do know it was explained in season two uh, at some point. Basically, she used all of her mana after the first disaster, mana disaster, right? What happened? She was falling down, and in order to um, um, have a cushion for the landing, she used all of her mana to create some kind of wind magic, and by doing so, that extreme stress is what caused her hair to turn white is the explanation, but I'm not sure if that's the actual reason, but that's the explanation that's been given. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to talk to Obachan. Baba! Baba, what's going on? If Rudy's dick was working before, in part one, and Irina Rize jumped on Rudy, and they had sex, that means we fucked Sophie's grandma. I mean, we were pretty much getting cucked by Sophie's grandma all of part one as we were traveling, and she was getting her back blown out the entire time. What the fuck is going on right now? 
ダメならルーデス様本日はありがとうございましたいかがなさいましたか今は Wait エリナリゼ did back off of Rudy once she saw the pendant in season 2 part 1 you're right that's even further hinting already Like, why would she back off after the pendant, right?、Mm, even more hints back. Oh, politics, diplomacy time? Take back the Asura kingdom. Sword duel, sword duel. Just to spar. Gotcha. But why? To test the swordsmanship? Luke used the same sword too, then. Why would Ariel give a fuck about Rudius's swordsmanship here? I mean, Rudy is officially just like a cracked magician, but he's always been keeping up with the sword training, I noticed, right? They kept showing us details of Rudy doing sword training, even though I feel like he should just, like, just focus on magic. Ariel cares about the swordsmanship because? Just to see if he is capable as more than just a magician? To see his potential in case that he can be helpful towards taking back the Asura kingdom? Hmm? <laughs> You spar with me then. Fuck you! Fuck you! Fu I, I said it four fucking times! Fuck you! Close enough, close enough, close enough. Oh! Single encounter already disarmed him, bro! And not even a swordsman either! Boom! It's over. No, no, no! Oh. That was sick! How he was so close to getting the sword back, but Rudy just like pounced on him. Double tap! He learned well! I would like to think that this is more of Ghislaine's training. Rather than、uh, uh, Paul, but hey, they still help, right? Holy shit. Luke's fucking pride. Oh!、Uh, oh! You have a broken fucking hand, and then he fucking used that same hand out of outrage to crush the ground. Who's your also trained? You're right, you're right. Luke, senpai. I feel bad for Luke, dude. His pride must be fucking just dead. Yeah, what was that about? Is it just to see if you're competent enough to protect Sophie? But as a magician, we are. But why the swordsmanship only? Hmm. There we go. And we. It's in Princess Ariel's best interest to recruit Rudy for this mission. How, though? Well, Sophie is, you know, a good friend of Ariel now. So that's another reason that we could help. I feel like. Ariel is basically saying, like, hey, I'm just trying to see if you're、um, good at using, you know,、uh, swords as well to protect Sophie. But more so than that, I feel like she's scouting potentially to see are you the guy that can actually help me retake back Asura? Maybe? True, she's just a friend. There's no ties. Where are we going with the princess plot? <laughs> okay. That's what everyone's thinking, right? Like, we should naturally go help her. <laughs> yeah? You just saw what happened with Luke? Who else can take Rudy? Ariel, are you strong? Can you really take Sophie back from us? She's talking a lot of shit right now. What, what do you got? What, 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 what do you got? Are, are there bodyguards? I feel like. You can't. It's not like we're never gonna not treasure Sophie. We're gonna treasure Sophie, but it's like, with what are you gonna take her back with? I like Luke a lot, though. Now, that duel was sick. It was more of a spar. What if Eris was there? If Eris was here, how close would have this battle been? It would have been fucking over in the first fucking strike. There would have been a rebound, bro. I wonder how strong Eris is at this point. It's been so long that we haven't seen Eris. And she's been training with Ghislaine, traveling. Where is she? When is she coming back? Fuck. If the end of this part two is the, another trans teleportation or some kind of transformation, some kind of、um, turning point because of what Sophie has been basically alluding to, right? You won't just like disappear on me, right? If that was another teleportation, 
Will we then arrive with Eris? How the fuck is it going to work? I'm not asking you to spoil me, but I'm just asking and talking to myself in my head. Is like, when is she going to come back? How strong is she? How is this going to relate to the turning point? Hmm. We're not done yet. Baba. That's so crazy. Sasuga Rudius. Bro's meat riding Rudy now that his meat is actually working. He is meat riding him. But like in the OVA, remember when Eris mentioned Rudy and, Lu and and Cliff was so fucking upset? But like obviously Cliff has a lot of development. That's what I'm trying to show. Cliff has so much fucking development. All it took was some grandmother elf coochie. Waga Aruji. Waga Kimi. Waga O. We're good. To make sure they weren't related. Oh, the lonely grandma. That's so sad. Her curse, because she wants to protect her family from, you know, the. She's a whore, right? So he doesn't want that to be good. So it's like she she intentionally cut herself out of the family. That's so fucking sad, dude. But now it's reconnected, and now we can be family. And Cliff is gonna be our grandfather. The 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 peg Sophie is a very sussy wording. I did notice that pegging. What do you mean by pegging? Hmm? Where do you think she was? Let's think about it from Cliff's perspective. Like, listen, there's nothing wrong with being a single mother, but quite often in the market, a lot of guys, when they figure out that their potential new date has kids, they're gonna be like, whoa, 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 I didn't sign up for this. And then sometimes there are the people that step up, right? They will, they're not the father, but they're the father that stepped up, stepdad. Cliff is not only stepping up for just regular kids, there's grandkids involved too. So Cliff is the grandfather that stepped up, bro. Cliff is so good. Cliff is so good, man. He accepts it. He embraces the grandchildren. Maybe Millis ain't so bad after all. I'm a follower of the Millis. I have a duty to make the one one woman who loves me happy, man. Oh, dude, Cliff is so fucking good. This is so different. And again, his development in part one was so quick, too. He went from edgy fucking kid to, like, uh, what happened? He went from edgy kid to, I'm a prodigy, and to got edited, and they changed overnight. Just changed overnight. Look at that resolve in his eyes. <laughs> Yeah, we're friends. Yeah, we're friends. Bye bye, grandmother. Bye bye, my grandma's boyfriend, who's gonna be my grandfather soon. Long hair selfie. Also, here's another show. Okay, so many fucking elves in anime where they're like discriminated against the palm because of their hair color. Now, Sophie was not discriminated upon because she had green hair, right? Well, she's an elf, but she's not a she's not a spared, right? What I'm trying to say is, there's so many fucking animes right now where in Elf Pride, white-haired elf cursed, uh, Zanugito, black-haired elf cursed, and now we got white-haired Sophie here who's an elf, but it's fine. The color in this show, I guess, doesn't matter. <laughs> Still too happy. We're getting set up, bro. Keep your guard up, man. And that's the episode. Another episode of us just getting buttered up. Oh, happy, happy. Rudy's got his dick working. They're making love. They're making babies. Is Sophie going to get pregnant soon, actually? Wait a minute. When is Sophie going to get pregnant? They're not using condoms. So that could still be on the table. 
this today was basically, you know, like a, a house welcoming party, right? Everybody's here celebrating. The Nana Hoshi loves the potato chips because you can't have, you know, Lay's and here anymore, right? Linear person that just came for the food. We got the biggest shock that Erina Rize is Sylphie's grandmother, which was kind of hinted in part one of the season. How? Through the pendant because Rudy is back. Sorry, Erina Rize stopped making moves onto Rudy when she saw the pendant from Sylphie. I noticed that in season part one, two part one, but I didn't realize like, why, right? It was like, huh, they must be somehow related, but it's like, what is the meaning of the pendant? Family stuff. So sad how Erina Rize is so sad and crying because she's a whore because of the curse. And because of that, her kids, it, it's, it's bad stigma, it's bad reputation. So she cut herself out of their family, right? Intentionally. But now she can, re, you know, meet back with, you know, the, the granddaughter. And finally, the grandmother has someone that's going to love her without... You know, with, with, with just with all his heart, Cliff is such a giga chat. The duel here with Luke, I feel bad for Luke, bro. Rudy just ended him so fucking quick. It was cool to see how this magician, this crack magician, has been keeping up with swordsmanship to the point where he can overpower Luke like this. He did get trained by Ruger, Ghislaine, and Paul, right? But still, Rudy is basically good at magic and sword, and I think Princess Ariel here was pretty much just seeing, yes, can you protect Sophie, but beyond that, the Osra Kingdom plot. Is he the guy... That's gonna be able to help me out. I think she's kind of scouting and touching with that, right? And aside from that, we're basically just getting buttered up. Buttered up, everything is too happy, everything is too calm. This is the calm before the storm. Get your guard up. Turning point will happen this season, and goddamn, it's gonna fucking just throw everything into chaos. But that's it for me. If you're still here, if you didn't enjoy this reaction, please like the video. Check out the other playlist for more content, and until next time. Take care.